Cura is a software that helps us prepare our model for 3D printing by slicing it into layers that the 3D printer can make. Think of it as a translator that interprets our 3D model into something the printer can understand. Cura is the primary software we use for the Ultimaker 3D printer in the prototyping studio at Cape and Annex. One of its best features is that you do not have to have the 3D printer present to prepare your model, meaning that you can do all the work from home and then come into the studio and simply press print. Cura can be downloaded for free at ultimaker.com. Do that now and install the program onto your computer, or you can follow along on one of the computers we have in the prototyping studio. Let's start by opening Cura. The first thing we will want to do is select our 3D printer. Doing this will set up a virtual machine of sorts to the left based on the actual printer in the prototyping studio. Click on Printer, then Add Printer, then choose Ultimaker 2 Extended. Now that we have our virtual machine on the left, let's open our Robot with Raygun model that we made in Tinkercad in the last video. If you don't have it, you can follow along with a 3D model you might have downloaded already. Or you can go to Thingiverse and download a model as we did in the first video of this series. Click the folder icon in the upper left hand corner and open the model file. Navigating around the model is the same as in Tinkercad. You can rotate by holding down the right click on your mouse and the control key on the keyboard. You can zoom using the Z button scroll wheel on the mouse or a two finger swipe on the trackpad. Everything else is done using the left panel. This button allows you to move the object. Notice that by dragging on the colored arrows, we can move the object in one direction at a time along the three major axes. The one below is used for scaling. Notice that by dragging one of the colored boxes, Kerr will scale all of our model proportionally. We can also use the number box to type in the percentage scale manually. Furthermore, unchecking the uniform scaling box will allow us to scale the model just along one axis. However, unless you have a specific reason to, it's best to make sure the uniform scaling button is checked on. This button is used for rotating. Click and drag on one of the colored rings to rotate your model along that axis. Notice that if you rotate your model off the printing bed, Cura will automatically move it onto the bed for you. As in Tinkercad, in order to scale correctly, you must know your model's current measurements, which can be found on the bottom of our screen. If you sized your model to your liking in Tinkercad, then it should import in that same size but it's best to double check. Notice that directly below our measurements, next to the clock icon, is the estimated time to print. This number will differ with every change we make, with the exception, usually, of rotating or moving our model. One of the most useful options on the left-handed panel is under the rotation tab called Lay Flat. For example, let's say your imported model is crooked. By selecting the model and then clicking the Lay Flat button, Curl will automatically find the most efficient way to place your model to save printing time and material. Now that you set your model on the printing bed, let's take a look at some of the printing options on the right. The first option to consider is the print quality, which is set as low, normal, or high. Print quality refers to both the amount of layers and the thickness of each layer printed. It's the difference between a slightly fuzzy photo and a very sharp photo. The lower the quality, the less print time. Low print quality can be useful to just get a rough general idea of what your model will look like and is recommended while prototyping. Normal print quality gives very good results, while high is marginally but visibly better. Once you have chosen the best resolution for your model, you will have to decide on the strength of your model, also known as the infill. This refers to how dense the inside of your model should be. For most applications, like jewelry, decorative models, and containers, light is strong enough. However, 
If you're printing tools or objects to be used in a high functioning capacity, such as a screwdriver or a weight bearing shelf, use the dense or solid option to make sure that your model won't break. Note that this will increase your print time significantly. For our current model, light is plenty strong. Next, you will see two options for helper parts. Printing a build plate is a useful option for models that are quirky and don't lay flat the way our robot does. Essentially, it prints a supportive border around the first layer of your model to provide stability. We probably don't need a build plate for this model, but to be on the safe side, we're going to keep this option checked. It will only increase your print time by a few minutes, and it helps ensure good results. The last option is about printing support structures. Supports are very light structures that help the printer successfully build layers that start off in mid-air or floating in space, often called overhangs. Our initial robot was built in such a way that it had no overhangs. Everything built off the first layer that was printed. However, because we started with a sphere for the body of our ray gun, not all of our model is lying flat on the print bed. Therefore, we will print support structures. Support structures often affect print times, so it's something to consider when you are initially designing your model. Designing objects with bases that are flat and without curves will often print more efficiently than more organic models. Fortunately, because we only need supports for the first few layers of our ray gun, it shouldn't change our print time too much. Now that we have set all our printing options, let's take a look at our print time and make sure it is acceptable. You'll notice that when you change an option, Cura reacts by declaring it is slicing your model, at the end of which you have a print time estimate. To better understand what this means, let's change our view in the bottom left corner to layers. Using the slider, we can see a representation of the slices the software has interpreted from our 3D model. This is roughly how the 3D printer will build your model, adding layer by layer. This can be really useful for seeing if you have any overhangs or layers that start in midair based on how Cura slices our model. The only thing that is left now is to save the file as G-code. G-code is a file type that can be fed directly to the printer without the need for a computer interface. We will save this onto the SD card found in the Ultimaker 2 extended printer in the prototyping studio. Eject it from the printer and load it into your computer. Then, on the bottom right, click Save File and save it to the SD card. Once that is done, eject it and put it back into the Ultimaker. Now all we need to do is print the model. Using the click wheel, rotate it to the left using your thumb until the print option is highlighted. Push down on the click wheel. Then, simply scroll down until you find the name of your model and push down again. And that's it! Your 3D model will start printing. I recommend that you watch your model print until it has printed the first two or three layers, which will take around 10 to 15 minutes. If for some reason your print fails or the printer begins to malfunction, simply turn it off by hitting the power button in the back left of the printer and email Leo Salvaggio, the prototyping studio coordinator at the Design Thinking Initiative at lsalvaggio at smith.edu, describing the problem, and I can help you print your model successfully. Thanks for watching our introduction to 3D printing video series. We hope that you have enjoyed it. We invite you to contact us if you have any questions about 3D printing, the prototyping studio, or would like to review any of this material with an instructor.